as we watch Israel war with Hamas and potentially even Iran, uh, really it's important that we kind of look at the, the land itself of Israel. Who does it really belong to? Because we could go back all the way back to 1500s because, and it's so frustrating when you have these conversations about the Israelites have been defending this land for thousands of years and people say, well, no, they just became a nation in 1948. That is two things, either it's ignorance or it's denial of the word of God. And, and, and let's just say ignorance and denial of the word of God are, are, are there. There's still these things referred to as the Amarnu letters. Well, what are the Amarnu letters? Well, it just so happens around 1500 BC, there was a series of letters from several kings uh, within the area that Israel is now um, and even beyond that, like the actual area that Israel conquered during Joshua's reign around 1500 BC, when they crossed that Jericho River and they started conquering kingdom after kingdom after kingdom after kingdom, following God's direction the whole way and having victory after victory after victory and not just destroying these cities, but occupying them, um, taking them down to nothing, if that's what God says. Uh, they completely turned these cities into their cities. They didn't just come through and pillage and steal. They came through and occupied and took it over and conquered it, which makes it by the rule of war, their land. And we know this because of the Amarnu letter. So even if you doubt the word of God, there's a series of letters that, that came from over 60 different kingdom cities in that region and all of these cities sent letters to places like Egypt, to the Pharaoh, begging, send help, send help. There are Hebrews coming through here and they're conquering our kingdoms and they're occupying our kingdoms and they're killing everybody in our kingdoms. Please send help. Literally hundreds of these letters from 60 different kingdoms repeatedly begging for help because the Hebrews, and they kept naming them, Hebrews are coming in and they're conquering us. This is just a, like, you can go read these letters, the Amarnu letters. Um, they're not something that's like secretive or in the basement of uh, Rome or like, no, they're real letters. And this is the thing that, you know, especially the naysayers, they're always kind of like, well, you know, well, you can't prove it or, you know, who would worship a guy with a big white beard in the clouds and blah, blah, blah. And, and it is what it is. You know, uh, scoffers have always been there. And in the end times, according to the word of God, there'll be more like scoffers will be prevailing in the end times. But you can't deny letters written by actual kings begging pharaohs for help. Please help us. The Hebrews are conquering our kingdoms one by one, and they're occupying them. And this occupation ultimately led to the kingdom of Israel. And then, of course, Israel and Judah split into two. But nonetheless, this land was much, much larger than current day Israel. Uh, much, much larger. Uh, so do they have the right to this land? Yeah, they have the right to this land and they've had the right to this land for quite some time. About 3,500 years they have, they've had rights to this land. Um, you know, this is something that we just kind of have to first come to grips with, that they were there first. Um, now that we've come to grips with that, they, they have every right to defend their homeland, uh, every right to defend their homeland. So. Um, check out the Amarnu letters. They're really fascinating. Uh, if you want to do a little more research on it, um, just incredibly interesting series of letters coming from over 60 different kingdom cities around that region, begging Pharaoh to send troops to help defend against the Hebrews uh, who are conquering our cities and occupying our kingdoms. Um, please send help. Uh, the Amarnu letters, man. Uh, check them out. Any thoughts or insight on any of this, definitely put that below. Um, I do want to kind of close out by saying, you know, regardless how you feel about this, it's important that we continue to be on the side of Israel because God says whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. Whoever curses Israel will be cursed. And even in that moment in time when Israel is invading these cities like Jericho and 
and AI and all these other cities that are west of the Jordan River, um, it would have been hard to watch. And I'm sure, especially when they go into Jericho and God's like, kill every man, woman, and child, you'd be, there'd be, you'd break your heart. It'd be hard to watch, but it was what God said to do because he had to cleanse the land to pave the way for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's what he's doing again, uh, as he's paving the way for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to reign literally in Jerusalem. So he's not playing around. He's not playing around. And just as Christians, we really have to kind of wake up to that, that that we need to be on the right side of things, that it may look hard uh, and it may look like, gosh, I hate to see this happening to any human on the planet, um, but they didn't pick the fight. They, di they didn't pick the fight. You know, this fight was, was brought to their doorsteps and now they're defending their land and they're doing it with, you know, with brute force. And that's, <laughs> that's how you defend your land. You'd be doing the same thing if somebody was invading your land. So um, we just have to kind of wake up that these are God's people and it is paving the way for the coming of our Lord.